personality be? My name is Charlene Sheldon Carruthers. I went to work for WKY-TV in April 6, 1953. I heard about the opening from a dear friend that worked at WKY, and I went to work as a receptionist and relieved on the switchboard, which was the old-time switchboard, which had the plug-ins. I took tours and, and uh, we had live shows at that time and met so many people, Ed Sullivan, Glenn Campbell, and many people. Some of our live shows were Tom Paxton, Chrissy Thomas, uh, Danny Williams show when he had the elderly people. And then in about uh, five months, I was hired as a film editor, which I was trained on the job, and I went to work for Tiki Bodden. Hello, everybody. My name is Dan Hamill Williams. I'm better known in Oklahoma as Danny Williams, which is someone that I made up. When I got into the media, I decided that what I would do was if I saw somebody that was successful, I would try to emulate their personality so that everybody would like me. Well, I left Women's Scotty, and I missed it so bad, I cannot tell you how much I missed it. So Foreman Scotty's running out of material, and he asked me to come on the show one afternoon and play an old man. So, there comes Xavier T. Willard. Hi, Foreman Scotty. I'm Xavier T. Willard. Yes, I was dropped on a plane out of a wagon back in 22. And it was found by Nakaho Indian. My name is Don Wallace, and I'm the luckiest guy in the world. There's several reasons for that. I live to be 81 and a half years old. I've been retired 23 years. Most people retire and die. And I got to make a living doing what I like to do. It was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it very much. And, and in 1970, uh, 75, I believe it was, I, I syndicated my show in the Dallas market on one of Mr. Gaylord's station, KTVT Channel 11. Now KTVT was a very, it was an independent station, but it had a huge following on cable. It was on cable systems in parts of five states. My name is Ernie Schultz, and I came to work in the news department at WKY-TV in 1955, after one year at a new television station in Enid, KGEO. At that station, I worked a 60-hour week for $55 a week. News film was really more important to the newsroom when I was news director than the words, or just about anything else. I thought that news film, showing people the news rather than just telling them about it was our strongest point. So we spent a lot of time and effort in film and uh, tried to get a different angle, a different view of everything, and, and we were very heavily into aerials. Hi, I'm Gene Allen. On June the 6th, 1949, when uh, Channel 4 went on the air for the very first time, I was in summer school at Oklahoma a and in Stillwater and working as a copywriter at KSPI Radio in Stillwater. I uh, didn't know anybody who owned a television set, but it sounded really interesting. It was in all the papers. And um, I discovered that downtown Stillwater at uh, one of the uh, hardware stores, they had a television set in the window. 
So I walked down to Main Street and stood outside the window after hours, they were closed, and looked at this probably a 12 inch black and white TV set. Couldn't hear the sound, of course. It was inside the store and I was outside. But I thought that was really something. It was radio with pictures and that really sounded like a big deal to me. Well, I'm George Wesley, a native of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. I would go out into the uh, community and address some of the concerns that people had. Uh, many times in relation to uh, public service program, we used to do a lot of public service announcements and that sort of thing. Following up on that, many times uh, I would work with these communities uh, to enhance what they were trying to do. One interesting thing was when I was sharing an office. The news you see each day on WKY television is produced by a wonderful group of reporters, some you never see. I'd like for you to meet them all. Ernie Schultz, Cliff Adkins, Bob Grant, Bill Beebe, Scott Berner, Jim Williams, Virgil Dominic, Nelson Robinson, Houston Hall, Gene Allen, and Jerry Manning. This was their show, and this is their product, instant day-to-day -day history. Your history. History which maketh the young man to be old without either wrinkles or gray hairs, privileging him with the experience of age without either the infirmities or the inconveniences thereof. Thank you and Happy New Year to you all. Hello, I'm John Ferguson, and uh, very much enjoying being here and having a pleasure here to being with you and being able to talk a little bit about the history of WKY television. And that one thing right there tells me and proved to me all my life that the fans, the fan base out there and for that character Count Gregor was something that was so special because in those two instances proved to me and I have since learned a lot of ways how important the fans out there and that's just not saying words that's just proof of what fans can do and how lucky how blessed i have been all these many years sitting right here to now in 2011. i'm lee allen smith i uh, started working at uh, wky radio in 1956. Ronnie Cade did the scene back then, and the young people were clamoring to get on the scene. Just like Don Wallace not only had his disc jockey show uh, when we were strong number one at the time, but he also had the Don Wallace Wildlife, Wallace Wildlife, which is very successful, and he did a super job of that. But a group of people that kept us on the air and kept us quality uh, as high a level as it was, was our engineers. and there was. They were all such wonderful gentlemen, and uh, there's Aaron Britton, and Gene Lyons, and Willard Hines, Lester Tucker, Dale Bird, Bob Hayward, Louis Parks, Gene Shouse, a great guy, even uh, and D.A. Smith. But uh, they were just wonderful people, and they helped us keep us on the air, even particularly when we did uh, national shows that became national through Mathis Brothers was the Buck Owens show that brought in uh, Roy Clark and our, every uh, famous and well-known country singers there were. Very popular show that was done right out of our studio in, at uh, Channel 4. Doyle Glazier, we talked about all of his sets, but when you see our, our kitchen sets, uh, whatever you saw, with a special uh, backdrop for special uh, visitors. Doyle Glazier's was there to make sure that uh, 
we we had just what we needed to put that program on in a successful manner that it was that it was done. I'm Pam Henry and I started to work at WKY TV in June of 1972. And Russell Pearson said, here's our own Miss America, Pam Henry. I said, thank you, Russell. There were three rapes and five murders in the state of Oklahoma last night. Didn't sound much like Miss America. I've been told in years since that because I was the first woman hired to work in Channel 4, there was quite a bit of discussion about it. And one time, everyone in the newsroom got together to talk about did they really want a girl, a girl, to come to work at WKY-TV. My name is Ray Vaughn, and I live in Edmond, Oklahoma. Uh, I was at uh, WKY-TV uh, from 1973 to 1976. When we did edit, we would uh, have to use a, a little machine that scraped the emulsion off the back of the film, then we'd have a glue pot. We would uh, glue the film together and, and uh, have a heated seam on it uh, that would uh, uh, glue the pieces together and uh, if we got all that done it took a lot of time if we got it all done and if the splice didn't break then the story would be uh, on the air as we had, uh, had wanted it but it was a little uh, a little more difficult than uh, the digital uh, format and the age that we live in today uh, on the weekend shows uh, and, and again I think this is quite a bit different than than is done today but the news anchor was the producer of the show every time there was a show the news anchor was in charge of producing the show. Of course, they would consult with the weather guys and the sports guys as to how much time they needed. But they actually built the show uh, and, and were responsible for getting it on and off the air uh, at the appropriate times. Um, Ron Turner helped us uh, a lot with uh, trying to keep things uh, uh, properly documented and, and uh, formatted. Well, the folks at Channel 4 have asked me to give a long, and let us hope not boring, history of my life. Uh, we try to do that in as short time as we can. I was born in Greer County, southwestern corner of Oklahoma, December 15, 1911, which means I'm not a kid anymore. I became director of the Marketing Division of the Oklahoma State Board of Agriculture, which was a good job. And I had heard a rumor that uh, the farm department at WKY Radio and Television was going to be closed down. Well, I happened to know Ed Gaylord, Mr. E.K. Gaylord's son. We were personal acquaintances. So I called Ed and made a date with him to come down and talk with him. I had told the management at WKY that I wouldn't take the job until I had talked to Ed Gaylord, the Oklahoma Public Company owned the station. <coughs> so I went down to Oklahoma City and talked to Ed. Well, he said, and I told him, I said, now, I think I like what I'm looking at, but uh, I got this rumor that the farm broadcasting would be dispensed with soon at WKY Radio and Television. Ed Gaylord said, Russell, don't you believe it? He said, I don't know whether you are the man for the job or not. I think you probably are. But he said, as long as WKY and WKY Television is owned by the Oklahoma Publishing Company, which we own, he said there'll be a farm department there. 